Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. Um, today in this video, we're going to take a look at something catching my eye recently about the um, general availability of the Azure Service Bus Geo Replication feature. And in the video, I'm going to talk about this from two perspectives. The first perspective being more of an integration developer. Um, what is the difference between the options available? And the second option is I'm going to look at it from a FinOps perspective and just explain how the value proposition of this feature versus the cost of how it would work, how that stacks up and, you know, just dig a bit deeper as to what that means for FinOps people. Okay, so before we step into the um, geo-replication feature, I'm going to talk about some of the resilience options um, that are available on Service Bus in different tiers, just so we've got this background understanding to be clear on what the difference is between the different types of options you have available on Service Bus so we can get a really rounded understanding of this. So to begin with, we've got availability zones, which are available in all tiers of Service Bus. This is available in Standard and Premium. And basically here we've got a region where I've deployed a Service Bus namespace. In that namespace, I've got a queue. And I have a sender application sending a message and a receiver receiving it. Now, what Microsoft's doing out of the box without me having to configure any special features or anything like that is they have service bus sitting over availability zone. So this means that the data is replicated across three data centers in region. So this means when my um, sender sends that message, there's multiple copies of the message and I'll have some resilience where if one of those data centers goes down, I'll still be able to keep processing messages. I still should have um, significantly good recovery for this. And really that's going to kind of be just hidden away behind the scenes that I kind of get out of the box. It's not even a premium feature that I have to pay extra for. It, it's just something Microsoft are doing by default. Now that's really great because that I think if I remember right, that means we get three nines of um, availability off this, and that's really me still paying with um, Service Bus Standard and paying a very small monthly charge and a per message charge, um, which will scale quite nicely up and down. But I'm going to get this good level of resilience out of the box. Now, when we use the standard namespace, sometimes people would have a requirement where they wanted to have cross-region um, resilience. So again, we're still, before we get to the global um, replication option, we're just understanding these building blocks that lead up to that. So here I've got the standard namespace, but I need to be able to send a message and handle a region um, failure. So there's a couple of ways that people would do that with um, standards. So often these are referred to as um, active or passive replication. And I've put that in quotes because it's more of a design pattern, in my opinion, than an out of the box feature. So how this would work is my sender and my receiver take on a lot of responsibility. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You could either send to the primary namespace and then just have your components fail over to a secondary namespace and then process through that if, if needs be. Now that's gonna have a um it's gonna have a recovery time objective that's gonna be slightly slower because you would have to reconfigure the components. Um, the recovery point objective means you're probably going to lose any messages that have queued up that you haven't got to the front of the queue yet. Now, the second option, that, that was more of a passive approach. The second option would deal with some of that um, recovery point objective challenge. Where effectively, your sender would send a message to both namespaces at the same time, and your receiver would effectively receive from both of them and then it would have to work out from the messages, have I already processed this message before? So if you had id important messages that can be replayed, you're in a good place and that should be fine. But if you haven't, you might need to do some kind, kind of um, duplicate check to make sure you don't process duplicate messaging. Now, this um, could be made to work. It's quite fiddly. It puts quite a lot of responsibility on the sender and receiver to have to deal with challenges in this space. But as I say, it could be made to work. And this was one of the options available on um, 
service bus standard. <coughs> now, next up, we had um, a feature released a while ago called Geo Disaster Recovery. Now, this was available on the um, Azure Service Bus Premium namespace type. And what this meant was that um, I continue to send my messages to my um, primary namespace here, just like we'd expect. But I would have a secondary namespace where there'd be a replication of the metadata for the, um, for the messaging instance. So this basically meant queues and topics and subscriptions that I create will get duplicated into the secondary namespace. And if I had a problem and I needed to fail over, effectively I'm flipping a switch. And what would happen is this namespace would, um, you know, my, my sort of Mike's namespace dot service box dot windows dot net or whatever the domain would be, would actually just flip over to this secondary namespace and my messaging would, would flow through there. Now there's a couple of key points. The first one, that was a one time um, flip the switch. You can't just flip it back. Um, you could maybe, you know, if you needed to go back to another namespace, you could set up a new parent and then replicate back and flip over if you wanted to. Um, but the key point here was it was only the metadata. It wasn't the actual messages. So if I had a thousand messages queued up in namespace one waiting to be processed, if I flip the switch and go to namespace two, I effectively lose those messages. So there was some some definite advantages here, but there was still some limitations that you had to be aware of. Now the the next feature is the one that's now just gone into GA. So this is the global replication feature or geo replication, and the key difference here is it addresses this issue about the data. So what happens is we send a message here. And really, you know, the namespace um, domain name is really much more dynamic across these two instances. So I'll I'll basically send a message and it hits a queue. And then behind the scenes, Microsoft would be um, replicating the data and the metadata to namespace two. So, my, you know, if you imagine my thousand messages sitting on the queue waiting to be processed, they're also going to be on queue number two. Now there is, um, from a replication perspective, there is an async and a sync option, which would have some trade-offs. Obviously, async means it'll have less of a latency effect on your on your message throughput, and you'll have, um, I guess, a kind of a shorter recovery point. Async is going to have less of an impact on the throughput, but you do trade off that. You you do have the potential for a little bit of message loss. In that scenario where you know if, if the synchronization wasn't fully up to date and you had to flip over so you do sacrifice a small amount of um, recovery point um, risk there so really in this scenario i've got my two namespaces um in a in a failover scenario i can flip the switch that moves me from namespace one to namespace two and then I can, you know, my sender doesn't have to change, my receiver doesn't have to change, they're just going to continually be talking to the same domain name, but it's going to actually move to the other namespace. And then I can flip the switch back, which is something I couldn't do with the, the geo, uh, geo disaster recovery option, so I can actually move back to the primary one when I'm ready to, if, once my issue is resolved. So this gives us a much better, much richer, um, Geo replication solution here, and again, it takes all of the overhead off the sender and receiver. So let's just compare a couple of um, differences between these. So this this is just a snapshot out of the Microsoft documentation. So the key point is with what's replicated, both of them have metadata, but the geo replication adds the data, so the actual messages get replicated too, which is a huge difference. In terms of data loss, um, geo replication, so we don't really lose any data. DR, we lose the data because we're only replicating message, um, message entities like queues and topics. Um, failover, we've touched on a little bit, so it's you know you can flip it backwards and forwards, whereas DR is more of a one-time. 
And in the replication modes, we've got async and sync for geo replication, which isn't really applicable in the DR scenario. It's only available in the geo replication. Okay, so that was a, an overview I wanted to build up through understanding the differences between the different options you've got available. So next, we're going to talk about what does this mean if you're a FinOps person and understanding those trade-offs and risks and so on. So let's um, take a step back through these options we've discussed here. So we first off, we had the availability zone, which was the original one. So that was available on all the SKUs. And the key point was it didn't have any extra cost to what we're already paying whether it be standard or premium, Microsoft's taking care of that behind the scenes. The replication on standard, so standard namespaces are cheaper, but effectively we're duplicating the messaging because we were kind of really sending messages to two namespaces at the same time. So because we're paying a per message cost on standard that really doubles our cost effectively if we're sending every message twice and receiving it twice and as i said earlier i think it's more of a design pattern than a product feature now where it gets quite interesting for me is um, the geo dr um, feature on service bus this is where number one you need a, pr a premium namespace so you're paying per messaging unit or per namespace um, I guess that's slightly wrong. So in a, in a namespace, you can have multiple messaging units behind it, but each namespace you have in, in the DR scenario, you're really going to have two. And if that each namespace has, say, one or two messaging units, that's the block that you're paying for. So it's not per message. Now, because you, um, you will be doing replication, both this one and the geo-replication off option, there will be a data transfer cost as well, so that moving data between regions. But for the GeoDR scenario, that's going to be a very minimal cost because all you're replicating is the actual configuration of what queues and topics you've got. So if we said um, a, a ballpark example was I had two namespaces, two messaging units, let's say we've got one gig of data transfer, which is probably way more than you're actually going to have. You're going to be talking about 1400 um, us a month based on i think it was north europe was when i was looking at these costs on north europe and west europe now the interesting bit for me here is um if i take the geo replication a lot of these things are very similar so i've got the two namespaces i've got the per message unit costs but the bit that's going to be different is the cost for data transfer because i'm now going to be transferring message bodies so that volume of data is going to be much higher. And just as an example here, let's say I had 100 gig worth of data that got replicated between regions. I'm still talking about approximately in the region of 1,400 a month. Um, I think the um, the data transfer charges between regions are pretty, pretty reasonably good. Um, so it's got a very minimal impact from the looks of it. Now... I think there's a good question here um, for me as a, an architect would be now that I've got this in um, available in GA, I'm not really sure why I would choose this one um, and not the geo replication. So I think that'll be interesting to see how that changes people's architecture decisions in the future. But I'm going to assume because you just get so much more for very little cost difference. Geo replication is just probably a better choice in most scenarios. Okay, so if we think about the FinOps perspective here, um, we often talk about the, tra uh, the iron triangle and the trade offs between cost, speed, and quality. So, in this, um, this new feature from the Service Bus team, so the quality aspects we get improved application resiliency with the geo replication feature but we can also reduce complexity significantly so i think there will be scenarios where people have been staying on a standard namespace and doing one of those replication patterns because they needed the higher availability but they just um 
they you know they, they just kind of didn't have any other option available and it, it wasn't worth paying the extra for premium at the time but now you'll have geo replication that'll do a lot of that out the box i think we will see some people will move from standard to premium because it'll reduce the complexity which will actually treat transform into also a cost saving now speed's going to be a big thing here because with it being a configuration out of the box thing um it's going to be much easier to implement those more advanced scenarios um which i think will be really good for a lot of people now the next um the next thing's cost so with availability zones being included out of the box for a lot of people that um that might be what you need you don't necessarily need the cross region support for those people who do need it um geo replication costs slightly more or, well it certainly costs more than just standard of um namespace with availability zones but it only costs very fractionally more than what the geo dr solution on premium costs so i think it'll be you know what i was saying in the last slide there'll be many more people who'll choose that um geo replication than geo disaster recovery now with them um, service bus here one of the big things for me going out you know past the iron triangle is um, the risk reduction i think is really significant for this option so being able to produce a highly resilient highly available um cross-region messaging infrastructure that microsoft runs most of it for you is um, i think that's going to be a huge reduction in risk for a lot of people you know managing that kind of infrastructure yourself cross regions really challenging but now we can go way beyond what we've had previously and just outsource all of that risk and let microsoft do it for us and i think for most people um that i've come across service bus has been around for many years and it's one of these really robust reliable infrastructure services that lots of services depend on and it, it kind of just does the job for you now if we think about unit economics and value um for me one of the really interesting bits would be if i've got a high um, revenue generating application if i'm reallocating cost or investing more money in my solution this is probably a really good place to make an investment because the cost of my service bus infrastructure being a problem um in a region issue might be quite effect you know might have quite a significant effect on my um on my applications revenue generation or user experience that might cost me a lot of money if that wasn't working very well so because the cost of service bus premium effectively are adding another namespace but the cost isn't that huge on it that makes a significant improvement in the resilience and replication and, and that kind of thing of the solution overall this is probably quite a good area to invest in if, if this is the right thing for your application um i hope this video gives people a bit of food for thought around this service bus feature and how for a lot of people it could be a really good option to help them get more sort of return on their investment in cloud and thank you for listening to today's video